All right, here we go. Um, so today, I'm going to go over these three problems that I asked you guys to do. And then we'll take a look at this. So here, a force F is pulling on the block as shown, right? So this force right here is acting at an angle of theta, theta right here, okay? Assume that the coefficient of static friction, mu sub s, is large enough to keep any block, of uh, any of these blocks from sliding, all right, or slipping. So they all pretty much stay on top of each other, and it will move as one along this frictionless, um, frictionless uh, table, okay. And A, it says draw a free body diagram, right? Force diagram for each one of these, right? And the mass is below. Use on and by subscripts for all the normal and frictional forces. Okay. So that's very important that we could show that. So let's start with the top block right here, mass one. Okay. Now, Mass one has, I got my, we need a pool ruler. I left all my rulers at school and I don't have a ruler and this is what I found. So forgive me for giving you, bringing back childhood trauma. All right, so this is the force that we have that is pulling force, right? This is the force that's pulling the whole system. Now, obviously, we're going to have, right, um, F, let's have the easy, obvious one, which is FG, okay? So here's my FG of mass 1, and that is equal to M1 times G, right? Then, what we're going to have is, we're going to have a normal force that's going to be from mass 2 to mass 1. Now notice, I'm going to draw this thing, normal force, bigger than my FG1. Why? Because my F normal on 1, on block 1, by block two, right? It's going to be a combination of this Fx and Fy, okay? So you can see the Fy is going to be down like this. So this is your Fy, and this is your Fx, right? This is your Fx. Now, you don't have to divide these up into its components here, but I think it might not be a bad idea. Then, you have one more force acting on this thing, and that is the frictional force between block 1 and block 2. So here is my F friction right, on block 1 by block 2, oops, block 2, okay? Now let's take a look at block 2. Your block 2 will have obvious force of right, Fg2. So here I have F G2, which is M2 times G. Then I will also have this normal force, F normal on block 1 by block 2, acting downward, which is the reaction force, right? 
So here, here I have F normal on two by block one. So these two are the same. These two are the same, right? Forces. Okay. Then I have F normal on block two by block three. Okay, so here is my F normal on block two by block three. So those are all my vertical forces. Now what about my horizontal force? Well, the reaction force of this has to act on this. And this friction right here is what's making this accelerate in that direction with the system. Therefore, here is my F friction. So F friction on two by block one. So that's the reaction force of my friction one on one by two, which is friction on two by one. These are same magnitudes. Then I have friction acting between block two and three. Okay? And this friction friction right on two by Three. Okay, I hope everybody's okay with that. Now let's take a look at block three. Block three will have FG three, obviously. That's an obvious force. which is equal to M3 times G, okay? And, and we will have this force acting downward, right, by, so here, F normal on three, by 2, right? So we have F normal on 3 by 2. Then we have the normal force from the floor to my M3 going up. And most likely this one's going to be huge. Why? Because it has to support all three, well, all these three blocks here plus that little bit of the vertical component of the force. Okay? So this here is my F normal, right, on three by floor. Okay? Now, what's going to make this accelerate? That is 
the friction caused by M2 and M3, right? So the friction between them is what's going to make this accelerate. So here, this is the frictional force on 3 by 2. Okay? If you were to take a look at just this, okay, to figure out the normal force, the normal force obviously is going to be this y vertical component of the force pull plus the fg1 all right so a lot of people miss this out so sum of all forces for my mass one right in the y direction is equal to m1 a1 y right you know this is going to be zero because it's not going to be accelerating vertically so sum of all forces right, of mass 1 and y is equal to, I have f normal, right, on 1 by 2, right, and I have plus fg1, right, plus fy, okay? Now, this is angle theta right here. So you know M1AY is equal to, now this goes to zero, obviously. Right? Here, my F normal is positive. On one by two. My FG1 is negative. Fy is also negative. So my F normal on 1 by 2 is equal to, right? Fg1 plus, right? F sine theta. All right, so don't forget that. Okay. Rest, you really don't need too much of help. I think this is the important one. All right, any questions? All right, good. Moving right along. Let's take a look at a box. It's sliding counterclockwise along the loop-to-loop -loop track as shown. Okay, so it's like you know, it's like coming down like this and going like that, right? So loop-to-loop, -loop, it's like a, it's like a you know roller coaster thing, right? So assume that block always has enough speed to stay in contact with the track. Also assume that kinetic friction is present and coefficient of friction is mu sub k. A. Use the tangent and radial axis shown. Right, so this is radial axis right here and this is tangential axis. Right. Draw a free body force diagram. For the masses box, what? For the masses box. Hmm. Okay, that's kind of weird grammar. Right? Um, should be just a box, right? So, the obvious one, of course, is always going to be the weight, right? FG. So, we're going to draw the FG. So here's the FG, which is equal to MG, right? 
Now, there's going to be a normal force from the track onto this box right here, okay? So, if you were to think about the normal force is going to act in towards the center. So, this is F normal on M by track. Okay? And that is in towards the center. Then, there's friction happening between the track and the box. And the friction will act tangentially opposite of its direction of motion. So this is friction on M by track. Okay. Now, I think it's important to understand that this FG is contributing to the circular motion. Because if we were to break this up into its components, right? This is your So here's your FG, you know, I'm going to move this FG here. So FG is right here, let's say. This is FG radial. Right? And this right here is your FG tangential. Okay? Assuming that this is straight up and down vertical, that means these two are parallel. That means this angle here is theta. Right? This angle here is theta as well. And I'm going to call this reference angle alpha. So it is very important to understand that this is contributing to that circular motion. So if I were to look for right, some of all forces in the radial direction is equal to MAC, right? And some of all forces in radial direction is equal to, I have two, which is F normal, right? Plus F G radio. Okay. So if I were to look at this, MAC, right? So M V squared over R is equal to F normal is in the same direction as my AC, therefore it is positive. And F G radio is also pointing in towards the center of the circle. So if I slide it up, it's the same direction. Therefore, it is also positive, right? So FG radio is equal to FG sine alpha. All right, so something good to know. All right, any questions? Now, obviously, your friction will change, right? Depending on where you are, I guess. And because your normal force will probably change, and your FG will change, or FG radio will change, right? Depending on where you are. So 
This is rather, you know, a good problem. It's, it's complex, but it's a pretty good problem. All right. All right. Any questions so far? All right. Good. Moving right along. Now let's take a look at this one. Yeah, this one's going to be a little bit of trouble, huh? So here, I have a force of FP, right? So FP is actually a force push in horizontal direction on block M, right? Assume that the coefficient of static friction mu sub s between the two blocks, right, is large enough to keep the blocks from slipping. So this block one will not be sliding up or sliding down, okay? And because it's not sliding up or sliding down, this will actually push onto my block two, which is triangular block. So this rectangular block is pushing onto my triangular block, and since this triangular block is on a frictionless surface, it's going to start to accelerate as a one unit. All right. So let's take a look at this one first. Okay. The M1. So if I were to push this thing horizontally, obviously I'm going to have a force F push. So here's my F push. Now the motion is going to be horizontal. So I'm not going to rotate the axis for this whole system. However, since this is on an incline relative to this block, you will have to rotate your system into your x prime and y prime axis. Okay. Now let's take a look at your FG. Your FG obviously will be always straight down. Right? So here is your FG one. Then there will be a normal force going like so. Now notice I drew my normal force a lot bigger than my FGY. Why? I'll show you. So here's my F normal on one by block two. And and my friction has to act right down this direction. And if I were to break this up into its, uh, crap, I just, uh, this looks a little bit off. It should be parallel, sorry. It should be parallel like this. And if I look at this, this FP will have, this is your X prime axis, by the way. Okay, so let me see if I can get a skinny axis line. Let's go through. So here's your. Oops. Sorry. This is your x prime axis. And this is your y prime axis. Okay. So this is your y prime axis. So here, this would be your FP x prime and this would be your fp 
y prime and this angle here will be your theta similarly this will have I guess this will be your f g1 x prime and this will be your fg1 y prime okay so these four forces okay have to be careful so here's the friction right here now notice this friction has to be combination of this plus that right so here so I guess this magnitude is way off, okay? So this is friction on one by block two, okay? So I guess this should be a little bit smaller. It should be like this, maybe, this, this big. Maybe it should be like this big. Not this, not this big, because this is like, this minus that should be this, I guess. So be careful, maybe I should, smaller all right all right now let's take a look at this for this one you're obviously your fg2 will go straight down then you will have this acting downward direction okay which is pretty much the reaction force okay so f normal on two by one and you will have normal force from the floor going straight up this is your F normal on to by floor you know what maybe I'm gonna just change this friction to small this is very wrong Okay, so that's your friction. I think that's a little bit better. Then, your friction actually is going to be in this direction. Okay, this friction... on two by block one okay so if you think about it the x component of this friction right is what's making this block and the whole system accelerate okay so keep that in mind please so so this right here is f friction on two by one x and this one is F friction on 2 by 1 Y. Okay, I'm not going to write that in there. So if I were to take a look at the mass 1, right? Let's take a look at the mass 1. Sum of all forces for mass 1, right, in the Y prime direction 
is equal to m1 times a y prime, right? But you know your acceleration in the a in the y prime direction will be zero. Okay. So sum of all forces one and y prime is also equal to right. You basically have f normal right on one by two right. And you have f g one y prime right. And you have F P Y prime. So if you were to say M one A Y prime, you know this goes to zero, right? That has to equal to right? F normal is positive minus right, minus f g1 y prime right minus f push y prime okay so 0 is equal to that you could think of it as f normal minus right M one G um, sine no cosine of theta minus minus F P sine of theta. So you can calculate your normal force as M one G cosine theta plus fp sine theta as your normal force. All right. I'm running out of room. You need that normal force to calculate your friction. All right, any questions? Okay, good. Um, I will actually, and I did, post it some extra work for you guys if you want to give it a shot. Um, I posted these worksheet sort of like a practice on Schoology. So try this one, okay? So here, there's only one mass going through the loop, the loop, right? So if you were to practice drawing free body diagram at all these different locations, this location here, at this location, it's only one mass at different time frame, right? So Give it a practice. I put the solutions up on there as well, so you should be able to check your work. All right. Then you should be able to do this. This is kind of easy. You should be able to do friction between M1 and M2. Right. So you should be able to do that. This looks a little challenging, but don't be intimidated. All right. So there's definitely... Um, it gives you the direction already, so M1 goes down. So you should be able to draw all the force diagrams for this, as well as this one, right? So this is, uh, I guess, horizontal motion, okay? So take a look at this as a horizontal motion going around like this, and draw the free body diagram with friction involved. All right. All right. So
So, any questions? All right, then. Um, let's take a look at your chapter seven. All right. Um, chapter seven. Um, I did not print this out. Hold on. 